vertical and horizontal stretching and shrinking of graphs. So, so far we've looked at shifting graphs vertically and shifting graphs horizontally. And we looked at reflecting graphs about the x-axis or about the y-axis. In this video, we're going to use vertical and horizontal stretching and shrinking to graph functions. So vertical stretching, pulling a graph up, not changing the x-intercepts, or pushing a graph in, again, not changing the x-intercepts, and horizontally stretching, uh, changing the x-intercepts, but not changing the maxes and minimums, or horizontal shrinking, pushing in from the sides, uh, would be horizontal shrinking. We're going to see this as we do use our graphing calculators. So obviously, ver vertical and horizontal stretching or shrinking of a function's graph changes its shape. A vertical stretch is when we pull up from above and we pull down from below. Okay, that moves a function's graph away from the x-axis. Okay, it does not change x-intercepts. Okay, when you pull away from the x-axis, you're not going to change the x-intercepts. Okay, a vertical shrink, you're going to, whoops, I just hit my, you're going to push you're going to push in down from above, and you're going to push up from below, okay? And that compresses the function's graph toward the x-axis. And as with the vertical shrink, it's not going to change the x-intercepts. Important to know this. Okay, horizontal stretch, we're going to pull the graph out to the left and to the right. Okay, we're going to move the function's graph away from the y-axis. Okay, in these cases, it's not going to change, so it does not change the maximums and minimums. And you'll see what I mean by that in my example. M-I-N, I, I got to spell minimum correctly. M-I-N-I-M-U, I hope that's right, minimums. And finally, a horizontal shrink. We're going to push the graph in, okay, from the left and from the right. We're going to compress it toward the y-axis. And again, it's going to change the x-intercepts, but it's not going to change the maxes and the mins, okay? Our highs and our lows will not change. Let's take a look. This will make a lot more sense when we take a look at a couple of examples. Now, for these examples, I'm going to use the sine function, which might be a new function for some of you. On your calculator, it's simply the sine of x. We're not going to worry about what it means or how it works. We're just going to take a look at its graph so that we can see how vertically stretching and shrinking and horizontally stretching and shrinking works. It's not that that's a good function to use. Okay, so to vertically stretch or shrink, okay, we're going to multiply the entire function by a positive real number. If that positive number is greater than 1, we're going to vertically stretch. If that positive number is between 0 and 1, we're going to vertically shrink. Okay, so let's take a look f of x, we're going to use the sine function, so the sine of x. Okay, let me make sure I've got my... Okay, so now, what does the sine of x look like? Again, if you're not familiar with it, don't worry so much about this graph or what it does, but it basically does this. It's a wave for those who have seen the sine of x. Okay, so it's a wave. And I'm... It goes from negative 1 to 1, and that's probably a little bit better. It's a wave function. Okay, so we want to stretch this. Okay, so we want to pull the highs up, and we want to pull the lows down. So let's say that g of x is going to be 2 sine of x. 
So if we multiply by a number greater than one, this is a stretch because it's greater than one right here, which means that the high gets higher and the low gets lower, but we still have the same x-intercepts. So we're gonna go like this, okay? Whoops, we still have the same x. It doesn't change the x-intercepts. That's a stretch. Let's go down past here, down to here, and up to here. So this one was f of x. This one is g of x. We have stretched it. Again, note, the x-intercepts have not changed. We've pulled the highs up by a factor of 2, and we pulled the, lo the lows down by a factor of 2. If we were to take the same thing and that constant were to be between 0 and 1, for example, a half, okay, we multiply the sine function by a half, we're going to shrink it. Okay, so again, we're going to keep our x-intercepts, but now we're going to be these are now our low points and our high points, okay? We're going to change, so I'm going to see if I can't... Okay, so again, we're keeping our x-intercepts. And I will, I'll, I'll kind of put a, well, I'll go right to here. This is the h of x function. So we, we multiply by a number between 0 and 1. We have shrunk it. Okay, so there we have it here. Okay, again, I'm going to make, I'm going to remind you, note, when vertically stretching, well, I can't, S-T-R-E-T-C-H, or shrinking, the x-intercepts, Do not change. Okay, what changes is the minimums of the maximums, the local minimums and local maximums. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to go into here. On now. I've already put my, my graphs in. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead. I can delete this one. I can go back and redo these. Let's take a look at my sine graph, and I've set it up. I'm in a different mode. I'm in radian mode, not degree mode, and I've set my window up. So it's easier to see this, okay? And I'm gonna graph it. Here's the sine function, the, the parent sine function, okay? Now, let's multiply it by two, uh, a number greater than one. Let's multiply the entire function by two. And this results in a vertical stretch. Notice we've stretched it up. Again, notice that the red graph here is not is crossing the x-intercepts have not changed we just have raised the the, uh, the the local maximums and we've lowered the local minimums let's go back to here and now let's multiply this function by a half so i'll do that with the fraction why not so one half and we'll multiply the entire function this whoops clear this the entire sine function by a half, and there's here we come. There's the black. You can notice it is now uh, vertically shrunk. We've pushed in, and this is the black one down here. And again, notice the x-intercepts did not change. What changed were the highs and the lows, but the x-intercepts. So in a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. The x-intercepts do not change. Very important to remember that because it really makes it really helps you to create the graph. Now let's talk about the horizontal stretch or shrink. And I need the horizontal stretch or shrink paper. Okay. Okay. All right, a horizontal stretch or shrink. We're going to multiply the function's input value. And this should seem familiar. Sometimes we, you know, we we multiply we do something to the entire function, or we do something to the input of the function. 
okay? And that's what's making these changes by a positive real number, okay? So if the, if the number being multiplied is greater than one, we are horizontally shrinking. If the number we're multiplying the input by is between zero and one, we are horizontally stretching. And we will again use, let me get my notes squared away, we will again use the sine function to see how this looks. So here's my sine function, okay? And I want to horizontally shrink it like that, come in. So I'm gonna multiply the input value by a number greater than one. I'll make that my g of x function. Okay, so how about the sine of 3x? Okay, so let's see here. And again, no worries, we don't know the sine function, we know it's a wave. Okay, so here is my sine function. Okay, and this is the f of x is a sine of x function. Multiply it by 3x, we're gonna change, we're gonna squish it in. Now that's gonna change, if you're gonna, if you're gonna squish things in on the x, we're gonna change the intercepts, but it's not gonna change the height. Okay, so squishing it in means it's gonna come in, the height stays the same. The, oops, I should be doing this with a dotted line. Sorry about that. The height stays, the height, the, the relative maxes and relative mins stay the same. The function is just getting squished in the horizontal direction. Okay, so it looks like that. So this is the g of x function. Okay, we are squishing it. We're pushing it in by a factor of three in this case. So that's what it looks like. Again, notice my x-intercepts have, except for the origin, of course, have changed. Okay, but my relative maxes and relative mins stay the same. Now, if I multiply the input value by a number between zero and one, and again, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, what do I want? To, this is the shrunk because it's a number greater than one. If I multiply it by a number between zero and one, we're going to get a stretch. So again, we're going to have we're gonna have the same max and same relative min. But we're gonna change the intercepts. So here is h of x, okay? So the number between zero and one multiplied by the input value has resulted in a horizontal stretch. We've pulled the graph out, but it's not changing the relative maxes and relative min. So again, let's note this, okay? Relative maxes and mins do not change. When we do horizontal, okay? X-intercepts do change as you stretch or shrink it horizontally. Let's take a look. Let's say I got three and one half. I remember my number is there. Okay, so let's go back to y equals and we'll clear out and we'll remind ourselves, and I may have to make us, I may have to make some adjustments. We'll see. We'll remind ourselves the sine curve. Here it is. Okay. Okay, now let's do the sine of, and let's multiply the input value by three. So the sine of three X, and this should squish it. There you go. We just shrunk it. Notice relative maxes and relative mins did not change. It got compressed in the horizontal direction, okay? Now let's go back and let's stretch it in the horizontal direction by multiplying the input value by a number between zero and one, and I think I used a half. 
So the sine of one half of x. And this should stretch it in the horizontal direction. Here comes the black, and there you go. The black is now coming through. It's reaching the same relative maxes and the same relative mins, but again, the x-intercepts, with the exception of the origin, because you know they're all passing through the origin, the, uh, the, uh, the x-intercepts have changed. But again, note with horizontal, our maxes, our relative maxes, and our relative mins are all the same. And that's the difference, that's what you'll see, the difference between vertical stretching and shrinking and horizontal stretching and shrinking. So we've covered it all. Vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, reflections, and vertical stretches and shrinks, and horizontal stretches and shrinks.